Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Innovation Room podcast. My name is Tori Hillman, and I'm here with my co-host, Jonathan Yasko. In part two of this little series about employee training, we're talking a little bit more about practical strategies for employee training. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, really awesome because in the last episode, we got an idea of the value of employee training. So why should we be training employees? And so today we're going to talk a little bit about some practical strategies to get that training to those employees. Okay, so part two, we're talking about employee training, but specifically practical strategies to improve employee training. And obviously we can all agree that employee learning, it's critical to a successful workplace, but deploying strategy is a different beast. So Brittany, talk to us about just some strategies or ways that you've innovated your employee training that have helped make it more valuable and more effective. So one of the things that I did to implement more value into our training is I created a library that contains step-by-step training videos, links to external sites and other videos, as well as cheat sheets and files that really capture what we do on a day-to-day basis. So not to push my teammates away from coming to me with if they have questions, but to give them like a secondary thing to reference back to. So maybe we've walked through the process a couple of times, but they get stuck on something and I might not be available right then, but they have that library to reference back to to find that answer that they need. And they have those cheat sheets right in front of them to use on demand. Yeah, yeah, that's a really great strategy. And we're implementing this not just in our design team, but also in our project management team where you've got some of those tasks that are a little bit more regular, right? It's very process oriented. And so it's not that, Brittany or our other managers don't care about our people, but it's also about how do we create processes that empower our employees to do their jobs really well. So I love the library idea, Brittany. That's a great strategy for sure. What are there other ways that you've improved the way that you're training? I know you had brought up in part one doing the tours of our shop floor, and that sounds like it's an effective way of training employees too. Absolutely. Uh, We're actually at a spot where they've been through most of the onboarding training to and have a lot of knowledge now as to how parts and pieces fit together and how they work when we're doing our spec drawings and putting together cross sections that now they've actually asked me, hey, can we get that appointment where we can come back into the shop and see everything one more time? Because now we have this better understanding of what it is, what all these parts and pieces are that we're drawing and putting together. And now we want to go back to the shop and we want to get hands on and we want to see it again because we know what it is now. So that's just been really positive to hear from them. And I have to think it's really fun to be able to see the drawings that y'all are putting together actually happening in real life. You're staring at a screen all day, but then to see the sign coming together, I have to imagine there's some reward there too. Oh, absolutely. Another thing that we've also been doing is I will do like a random kind of like a pop quiz where we'll go over that section that we just trained in and maybe yeah. we're on to the next section. So we're, that's been in the back of their mind. They're not thinking about those things right now. And they'll be like, okay, pop quiz. This is like 10 questions. Some of this stuff you have to answer. Something is multiple choice. Some of things are you have to draw this for me or scale this for me. And I'll always add two of the same questions, but it's worded differently or I'm asking in a different way. And it's a trick question just to see which one they answer, if they have the same answer, if they've answered this one right and this one wrong. I'll also throw in like a little bonus question in the back there that's just for fun. Okay, what are my dog's names? Something for them to get bonus points, but just to make it funny too. And they really enjoyed that process as well. Yeah, no, that's a great tip just for anyone. As you're creating your onboarding processes, how can you essentially gamify them or make it into a little bit of a competition or just make it more interesting? I remember in school to prep for an exam or something, teachers would create I think it's called cahoots. They would do a cahoots and you would do different questions as a whole class, right? And it was just a way to make studying a little bit more accessible and a little bit more fun. And I think Brittany's capturing that same idea here. Let's make it into a game or a mini competition. And who who knows X, Y, and Z about the technical processes, but also who knows 
her pets' names, stuff like that. And it creates that like relational connection too. And it's just really fun. So that's a really great tip. How can you make your onboarding training into a game instead of just sitting there staring at a video or whatever? It's a great advice for sure. For sure. So Brittany, what other advice will you give to folks who know that they need to switch up their employee training, but they don't know where to start? Where should they begin? The best advice I can give is just where I began with that. And what I did was I just asked my team. I think you're going to find that you get the best feedback and have the best understanding of what may be lacking or missing in training or or what people might want to see be added in addition to what's already there for training. If you just ask your team, I, I asked one of our teammates, what she thought she was maybe missing out on or didn't get enough training in when she was hired on a little over a year ago. And she was very upfront with me as to what she thought she missed out on or or didn't get in her training and was really willing to jump in and, hey, can I go through this stuff with you and learn this now? And if we go through this with our new hires, can I jump in on those meetings and join you guys for that? Because I feel I missed this stuff and I'd really like to learn it now. And so I think that was really beneficial and eye-opening for me as a manager to just understand that we can trust them to tell us what it is that they're missing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and I think even on top of that, if you just try something, right? Like even if you get stonewalled by your team, like you said, well, ask your team and they're like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. You could just try something, right? And if it, and then get feedback, right? But if you don't try anything, you're not going to get anywhere. I uh, One of my favorite sayings, if, is if you don't change anything, nothing will change. So if you're going along without training and you don't start training, you're never going to have training, you know? So how about you just try something and then get feedback? Oh, that was a horrible training. Okay, we'll try something else next time. At least mix it up. Right, exactly, exactly. Which, Brittany, so I want to ask, because your kind of your onboarding, your training is longer probably than your average job, just because it's so technical and it's just really unique to the industry. So how do you support employees over the long process of training? Or like you mentioned, your one designer who was mostly up to speed, but had maybe had missed a few things. How do you navigate that or balance that when your learning curve is long and steep? I think it's honestly another area where DISC has come in to play it's really just training everyone to their strengths and also the way of understanding that everyone learns at a different pace. Not everybody is going to learn at the same speed. So it's really just getting to know each individual and understanding how they learn. And a lot of it is group training and that's great, but there's a lot of it too, where you have to reach out one-on-one and really sit with somebody and go through things with them because people learn differently. Some are a little more hands-on, some are more visual, some just want to be thrown in the deep end and go with it. And so we do a little bit of everything when it comes to that. And I found that one thing that really works for what we do in our department is each person has their own niche. They have certain clients or certain types of jobs that they really enjoy working on, or they maybe excel at. And it's really to just push that training into their niche and go with it and let them work on the things that I know that they can get through real quickly or they understand really well. But then when that new project comes on, get them involved in that too. So the other piece of this is we've we've touched on personal relationships and the value of that and some of those soft skills. From a technology standpoint, Brittany, what would you recommend people look into if they're wanting to enhance some of their training opportunities from the technology side of things? I think from the technology side of things, at least for us, I've gotten great feedback about the video training. My experience with that and maybe even my own personal viewpoints on that is when videos are like pushed on you during an onboarding process. Oh, watch five hours of videos and take these quizzes. Like nobody really wants, but what I found is a lot of our processes and things that we do are a little bit lengthy. And so I've tried to do my best to go through and take uh, step-by-step videos of me going through the process and maybe not all in one chunk. Maybe if it's a 10 minute process, I'm breaking that up into three smaller videos and that just gives them something they can reference back to and not have to watch 10 minutes to find the answer that maybe they were looking for if somebody's not available right now to help them. 
but it also, I've had positive feedback from them with the videos asking, Hey, can you create a video for this? I noticed that this video wasn't in the library yet. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Let, let me get right on that because they really enjoy having something to reference back to because they don't always feel that it's necessary to reach out and ask somebody else on the team when they have 99% of the steps, but they just need this one little thing they forgot. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a really simple, simple, but super effective use of technology that going back to that library, having the training library, especially for those process oriented jobs, it's a great tip. Very effective. Brittany, I know you're looking into some new technologies for training designers. What are some things that you're investigating that maybe you haven't implemented yet that you think could be valuable? I do know that with some of the software that they use, they do offer for businesses on-site training. I've looked into some of that as well as their, they do have like links uh, to training videos that are on their websites right. that may right. be a little more fine-tuned and a little more detail-oriented mm -hmm. compared to some yeah. of the stuff that I'm doing in-house with just our process. It gets a little more into the software and how where mm. tools are and certain functions are. And I think that plays a vital role with the ever-evolving industry just because our software is constantly being updated. Like it could be updated from this week to next week and tools change, names change. The function might not change, but it might be in a different spot in the program. So just having them stay up to date with those types of things is really beneficial as well. Brittany, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. It was awesome to hear your insights. And I hope that all of our listeners get just some new perspective on how they can implement interesting training practices into their own teams. Yeah, definitely. It was a pleasure to have you on. And it's always great talking with you and being able to set aside some time. Thank you so much for having me on the show, guys. Okay, Jonathan, so just jumping into a few key takeaways of the episode, what are your thoughts on those key points, key pieces of advice that people should walk away from or walk away with? Yeah, and I think one of the biggest ones was just talking to your employees, right? Just asking, hey, what works with you? What do you think we should do? And uh, of course, it makes more sense on a smaller team, right? If you have a team of less than 10, it's a lot easier to hit more people and the, effectively train them. And when you get into larger, larger groups of people, you just got to wing it and hope that you're reaching the masses. But I think that was my biggest one is get feedback from your team, right? Hey, how do you feel? And you can even cascade that down. If you've got multiple layers of management below you, what does your team think? Okay, ask them, then have them go ask, and then come to a consensus. But really doing some field work beforehand before you just pick a strategy or pick, oh, this is how we're going to do the training. When you find out, oh, we're going to make everybody do in-person training and everybody hates in-person. They all would rather have video. So you, you're fighting a completely uphill battle then. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think you're spot on picking something out of the hat with no research doesn't make a lot of sense. You'd make almost no other business decision that way. So why right. would you approach training? <laughs> training the same you way. Approach training yeah. that way? <laughs> um, and I think too, this is just Tori spitballing here, but with the larger teams, right, you've got 10 or more employees working underneath you and you're like, how do I make employee training a really meaningful process? That might be a place where having employees who've been with you for a longer period allowing them to mentor newer members of the team, whether you've got a buddy system, right? Or just how can you cultivate relationships and that company culture in a meaningful way that doesn't feel like maybe mentorship is your approach. Okay, now I've signed up for this little mentorship program and it's all dandy, right? But how can you organically make that happen for people? And so many employees, y'all, so many employees love mentors. They want it, whether it's through a formal program process, right? That's something that a ton of Fortune 500 companies have that really improves their employee experience. And it's different when you're a huge company, but there's still value in it even when you are a smaller company. How are you, again, creating those relationships, fostering, cultivating that culture in a meaningful way? Exactly. It, it can happen big or small. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, the thing that stuck out about what Brittany talked about was that it really doesn't have to be complex. We talk about technology. We talk about how we 
innovating. And I think when we talk about innovating, we're always thinking about technology and artificial intelligence and how do we almost make processes and things more complex. And that's not necessarily innovating. Sometimes it's really about simplifying. So Brittany is taking the approach of literally just recording the stuff that the designers are doing on a daily basis. She puts that all into a library so it's easy to sort through so that her team, when they have a question, can just go to the library instead of sending her a message and having to get on a call and walking through it again, right? That's an important mindset, I think, to have of more technology or more complexity, more steps doesn't necessarily make training better. Sometimes it's about simplifying that process and refining it in a way that's more bite-sized for your team. This has been a great second part to our episode. So thanks uh, to Brittany for joining us again. And hopefully everybody got some uh, practical strategies and ideas that they can implement in uh, their own training processes. Yeah. Thanks y'all for joining us for today's episode. And thanks again to Brittany for all of her insights. You can also sign up for our monthly in newsletter on our website or in the description of the show. And that just provides more educational resources like what you get here on the podcast. And as always, let us know if you've got any questions or comments on today's topic. We'd love to hear how y'all are innovating your employee training, or maybe you've got some ideas on what you'd like us to talk about next. So until next time, keep innovating. Keep innovating.